Hey, Mary, back with another video. It's 1.27 p.m. It is September 25th. It is Wednesday. Wednesday. That's the day it is, yeah. Um, I'm losing track of the days because, you know, they're pretty much all the same. But anyway, so I'm on here today talking about um, some of the things that's going on in my life right now. And I have to say, today's a pretty good day. Um, I'm kind of bored, but I'm kind of hanging in there and just kind of you know, trying to look around the house and see what I can do and, you know, that kind of stuff. So, anyway, so I've been doing some thinking. And, um, you know, when you have dealt with community harassment, gang stalking or whatever, you don't really know exactly how to proceed in doing what it is that you need to do. And so, as you know, I was, you know, thinking of starting my job search. So I, I decided to apply on some of the jobs that I saw online, but I do have a list of people that I will contact or wanted to contact anyway. The reason why I say wanted to contact is because I, I'm at the point where I just don't even know, you know, what the point is or the, what's, what's the point. Um, I do know when I first started doing these videos, I did mention about how once you are put into this program, it is very difficult to get out of this program, um, mainly because it becomes a social cancer among communities, among people. And, um, you know, this is one of the reasons why in the beginning I was so proactive in contacting my previous employers and making these videos, sending my videos to my employer, previous employers to let them know that this is wrong and please, it's going to get out of control and it's going to get ugly. But you know they ignored everything and they were probably taking these instructions from my family which is very unfortunate especially when i think back on what these people were accusing me of and to find out that i had nothing to do with stephen lyles they were the ones who caused all the trauma and the drama over at um the place in chatsworth they were the people who caused all the problems over at the farmer's place and all the other places that went afterwards and so um there's so much insanity in this whole issue um, that it, it's like a I think that they have this desire to have to participate in extreme sports like um, like they have these competitions that you know I'm not really aware of but they want to be in them they feel um, like they're in competition with me and I have you know um, two previous sisters and then my um, ex-brother-in-law these people I call them previous but no it's ex 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 uh, former family okay I am no longer considered to be a part of that family now when you are an adult um, if you are like under the age of 18 if you want to um, disown your family um, typically you have to go to the court system and you have to become emancipated um, I don't know how long that process is if there's somebody out there who is a TI or somebody who is being abused by their family who want to be emancipated from their families um, you might want to go check out the court system and find out the necessary steps within that state that you're living in okay but when you are over the age of 18 you're an adult you can walk away from that family any time you want to okay now I have chosen to walk away from my family and not that was not a, a decision that I made willy-nilly after a long period of time after making all these videos and then slowly putting things together and finding out that they were responsible for all this I made a conscious decision that I no longer want to be a part of that family okay um, I have mentioned before that these people have abused me since I was a kid um, in grade school junior high school high school um, as I got to be an adult so many years that have gone by and throughout my life that you know um, if they had made us a, a false assumption okay and like the, the whole issue would happen over at the farmers place okay if they did that and they made one little mistake so they caused a workplace mobbing okay then it would be it would be like well, well still none of your business really whether that was the case or not but I could still somewhat understand it. When I think about what these people have done year after year after year after year after year after year after year, and it's like, you know what? You guys are destructive. Some people are just that way, and I accept it. I accept it for what it is. I don't have any emotional attachments, and I choose to let it go, okay? And there really is no point in somebody trying to say, well, you know, that's your sister, that's your mother, that's your whatever. The answer is no. I had given an example of what I consider to be, and this is based on the Bible, a deliberate sin, okay? Sins that were, or, or bad things that you do to other people, or against God, or whatever, uh, that you had a long period of time to think about it. 
And these people have had plenty of time to think about it. So they knew what they were doing. They knew that deep down inside they were doing it for their own selfish purposes, perhaps even their own morbid entertainment. I don't know. But um, I made a decision and that's my decision. Okay. Now, <clears throat> when you get, when you work with employment agencies, I know that it, I had read in the past, you know, that they do have these like do not respond or do not place or do not uh, uh, place in a job type pop-ups or blacklists that these people carry within their organizations, okay? But for some reason, and I have no idea why, I kept thinking, okay, I want to test the waters. I kind of want to see what's going on out there. I'm going to go ahead and send a resume to, and I was just kind of going through my mind, like, which one am I going to choose? Now, I know that my family had instructed one of those agencies, one of the big made top agencies, I'm not going to mention their name, um, but I'm just going to say that they have like three, they have three companies, I believe, umbrella under their main comp company. So um, they told me, they called me and told me that they were going to seek legal action if I contacted them again, no matter how civil I was over the phone. So this was my family trying to manipulate me, right? They really didn't want me to have anything in life, okay? They didn't want me to have any. Thing, period so they wanted to it's their game they're like well we're gonna we're on this Christian team quote unquote Christian team and Maria is not considered a Christian so we're going to take stuff from her or whatever the reason and they also might have thought that I was planning on marrying Stephen okay like I said I haven't seen this man in 30 years okay and you know I would love to see him I really would okay but whether I was with him or not you know, I don't know the outcome of that. So I, you know, understandably, a woman has to get on and do what she's got to do, right? But I believe that they may have also done this because I think perhaps maybe my sister could have liked Stephen maybe at one time or something because, and she wanted to prevent it. Or maybe she felt as though because he has a mental disability that that would just doesn't make any sense. And, you know, and then somebody in my family might have thought, well, how could she like somebody with a mental disability? First of all, I had no idea he had a mental disability. Second of all, um, you know, I know that there's some kids that were born in our family through my siblings who I don't consider to be very bright. Um, and, <laughs> you know, I, I just don't think that we have the right to judge, especially when I look around and see how other people are. I'm not saying everybody, but there's a lot of people who I consider to be really stupid. Okay, so let's not point the finger, okay? And I believe maybe my family had knowledge of this issue before I did. But whatever the case is, I suspect they tried to uh, prevent me from even having sort of contact with them. So um, anyway, um, they, they act like they're doing me a favor. I would like to say that there is nothing that these people have ever done for me that has had a positive outcome. Okay, if they thought that they were setting up my jobs, first of all, I'd like to say that I got into accounting on my own, okay? And I felt as though that was my thing, and this was my project, this was my life goal, this is what I wanted to do. I never invited these people, and I never said, hey, you know, Jim, my ex-brother-in-law, can you get in on this? Could you help me? I never asked for that. First of all, I'm not the kind of person who gets motivated or stimulated. When I have an idea, what, what motivates me, what stimulates me is when I keep it to myself, okay? I believe in applied energy. It's like you start focusing on something, right? And it becomes like this big ball of energy or there's something that really motivates you. And you take it inside of yourself. Like it's just this energy, this happiness, this goal, okay? Whatever it is you wanna do. And it wasn't anything major, but I figured, okay, well, this is a decent thing. And I started researching it. And I thought, okay, this is what I can do. You know, you start off with a job, you know, you work a few years, you get a reference and you go here, 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 and here. That was what I read from professional magazines, okay? Which made sense, okay? And I had no idea that people were targeted back then. This is like back in the 90s. I had no idea that even existed, right? So I never asked for it, okay? So then you get these intruders, my family, who come in and they want to take over your project. And they feel as though they have some sort of entitlement to it. And then they use this whole thing about, oh, Maria, she had a child out of wedlock 20-something years ago. And so in their mind, that just paints you as a bad person and blah, 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 blah. And it doesn't, okay? I will never apologize for anything that I have done in the past, period. I won't apologize for it. Should people have children out of wedlock? You know what? Um, I think ideally we want to have two parents to love the child and be guardians and protect that child. That's ideal, okay? 
everyone makes mistakes and I did my best okay I realized you know I can't live off a system or whatever so I went out and tried to do something for myself and it wasn't major okay but it was something that I felt we could make a decent living for me and my son okay and um, you know as I as I went through these different jobs throughout the years you know I had noticed that there was these hostile people for no apparent reason like it would start off great and then all of a sudden they get all edgy and hostile and it's this is my family's intrusion okay so these people think that they're doing me a favor you have never done me a favor what good is it if you set me up in a job and you create these hostile environments where these people are mobbing you the issue is is that you can't accept the fact that I'm not interested in your game I don't want to be in your game. I don't want you in your family. I don't want any of it. And I'm referring to, when I say your family, that's how I'm putting the separation between us. I don't, I don't want it. And see, when you, when you bring other people into it, like for example, my previous employers and the lady over there at the um, agency and all this other stuff, some people can't, they cannot conceive, they cannot understand, fathom, they can't understand how somebody would want to sever ties with their family. So they think, well, well, I still have to respect this bond. You know, first of all, what they're doing is illegal. Okay, first of all. But second, mostly, there's a lot of people who have dysfunctional families. There's a lot of people who have decided to, what they call, um, not go solo. You are going solo, but you're basically go no contact. Meaning that you don't want Christmas cards from them, you don't want to hear from them, you don't want to talk to them, you don't want anything to do with them. And that's how I'm doing it. Okay, I, I don't want that, right? Um, so when you get, when you deal with outside people, okay, because here's, here's one of the scenarios I think that you guys can get a clear picture of how this works. You know, these people intermingle with the people that you know, okay? So they develop a cl closer relationship with the people that you know because they are constantly putting you in situations where they create friction so you don't want to be around the people so they have the ear of like your boss of the people that you're working with so on and so forth so you these people on the outside develop a rapport with your ex-family or whoever is your perp or whatever so then they have this sort of sense of well i'm kind of partial to this person even though we don't really know this mask that these people are really wearing you know she said, you know, the, the oldest sister said that, you know, Marie had a child out of wedlock like 20 something years ago and blah, blah, blah. And this paints her as a bad person. It doesn't paint me as a bad person. It makes, paints me as a person who is a normal person who made a mistake when they were younger. And I honestly think that this was one of the best mistakes I ever made in my life. Because honestly, by having my son, my whole eyes started to become more open. And once I got away from my family I mean they their influence was always there mind you but once I stopped seeing them like regularly I started blossoming as a per blossoming as a person like I I started you know what's the word for it like you know like for example I would read with comprehension I you know I've always been able to read well but I'm just saying is like you know sometimes you'd read a book and then you 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 if somebody asked you what did you just read and you're like boo gone just gone I started noticing that my memory retention was better like everything was better for me you know and so some people are toxic and you don't really know that they're toxic you just know that some, every time you're around these people you feel down they just drain the hell out of you um but anyway my point is is that oftentimes when you bring people on the outside they have this well we're taking sides type thing and blah 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 and whatever okay but i've known my family and I've had a history of abuse with my family. Okay, now I don't care what kind of mask they show you on this particular side. My family is extremely abusive. And I would also like to say that they're very ignorant people. Okay, now I think one of the issues with, with my siblings, my former siblings, um, they, it's just regular catty bitchy shit. You know, like um, they have people monitoring what I eat. Um, you know, it's none of their business. Um, if they think I'm doing that for Stephen, it's not. But I think it has something to do with either, number one, they are ignorant because my mother was very overweight when I was growing up, okay? Very, very overweight. I mean, I would consider, uh, she was huge, okay? And, um, you know, some people think, because this is a figure that was around them all their life, they think that this is, like, normal, you know? And they don't realize that, I personally don't think it's normal. I mean, I do know it's common, but I don't think it's healthy. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying that I have the most 
wonderful life, but I will say, or that I, I'm 100% a health freak, okay? You know, I, I'm not perfect, okay? But when I grew up watching and having to see my overweight mother, I, that was a motivation enough for me. Not, it's not a man. It's the fact that I looked at this woman and realized that this is not what I want. And I didn't think it was something that was acceptable for me. It was not acceptable. I didn't hate her for being that way. I didn't. As a matter of fact, there were times I felt sorry for her. Because I understand, you know, I even went through phases where, you know, you're feeling down and then there's this chocolate bar, like that score bar, you know, and it's, it's, it becomes an intimate relationship with a candy bar, okay? Because, like, you're just so in love with its smooth chocolate and that, 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 that toffee flavor or whatever that is, you know, and I understand it, okay? It literally can send, like, euphoric feelings and chemicals and stuff like that in your brain. It, it can make you feel happy and high, you know, it, it can. Some people get high on food, okay? And it's understandable in this hellhole planet that we live in, you know, that you're going to want to seek comfort in something. I fully understand that, okay? And I'm not, I don't blame you for that, all right? But when you try to act like, or you, when you start thinking that obesity should be a family tradition, and I'm starting to get persecuted for it, and then you feel as though you can dangle my life in front of me because you feel in competition with me, that's not acceptable. That's a form of abuse, okay? It's ignorance and it's abuse, okay? It's not acceptable. Um, but I, you know, growing up, I, I didn't feel comfortable having an overweight mother. I didn't, okay? I never talked about it before. It was not something that I really felt like I should talk to I, about. I, I did only talk to about this issue one time with a girl that I met back in the 90s who was a lot like me. I mean, we even drove the same cars and people would see us together and they actually thought, that we were sisters, okay? And it was kind of cool hanging out with this chick for a while. We didn't hang out for very long, but we, we hung out for a while. And um, and we would talk, and she was telling me that she had an overweight mother, and she told me the story about her mom, how her mom was just one of these people who constantly had to feed her face all the time. And that her mom was eating a, I think one of those big gallons of ice cream. And you know how you get ice cream headaches? Well, her ice cream headache was so intense that she kind of passed out for a while and that she saw her mom on the toilet with her mouth open and it just freaked her out, right? And she and I were always <laughs> talking about, you know, how we didn't want to be like that. Like, I remember growing up, um, I think, um, I don't know, my mom got sick one time and she put, she had to go to the hospital. And before that, I would say I was pretty lean. Like, there were times my mom would say, call me sad sack or whatever, because sometimes my clothes would slip off my shoulder or whatever, because I, maybe there were times where I was even underweight, okay? And when my mom went to the hospital, and while she was in the hospital, my dad was in charge of us, and it was like, you know, refrigerator free for all. Whereas my mom, even though my mother was overweight, she did kind of say, well, you, at this particular time, you can have this or to eat, you can have this, whatever. She did try to monitor our food. I don't know if it was a control thing with her or what, or maybe she was trying to prevent us from being obese. I don't know. But I do know that when my dad was there, it was like the refrigerator's open. I could eat whatever I wanted. And I got a little chunky. So by the time my mom got out of the hospital, I was pretty chunky and I didn't like it. And so I remember when I was in seventh grade, you know, I was always on diets in high school. I was pretty lean, but then, you know, there were times where I would go up and down, up and down. And that was my story for a very, very long time. Okay. It's not men who motivate my actions. What motivates my actions is, I believe, what I saw when I was growing up. Now, this girl who told me the story about her mom passing out on the toilet after eating a bucket of um, <laughs> ice cream, I, I can't say that my mother did that, did that, okay? But I will say that I had observed my mother enough to where it was enough to leave an in lasting impression on, um, um, uh, in indention on my mind to make sure that I, I didn't accept that, okay? I know my old, my other, my uh, second to the oldest sister has struggled with her weight. I know that she had gastric bypass surgery. I also do think that because, you know, um, my mom, my mom, um, 
never told me that I was not allowed to do certain things. I mean, at certain ages, like, you know, I was able to choose my own religion by the time I got to be 17 or 18. I think it was 17. Okay. Um, you know, and my mother never had an issue with me, you know, wearing lipstick or, or, or jewelry. She said, when you're this particular age, this is what you can do, you know. And so that's what I did. You know, and so do a bunch of other women. So why is it that my sister is always jumping me? You need to understand, there's a lot of people who, who get into these stalking issues, these stalkers, okay? They edge into your environment, and they do. They mingle with all the other people. And the little secret is, is that, you know, you don't tell her, sh you don't tell her that I'm involved, okay? But we're just going to do this and this and this. And, this. and they do it for the, for the goal of harassing a person, which is wrong. Um, and that goes for, you know, um everything else. I mean, my mother has never told me, well, you know, you're whatever. She may not like it. Like my mom, she was one of those people. She was rather into the plain stuff. Okay. She never wore nail polish. She never wore nail polish or anything like that. But she said we were at, we were at a certain age. You can wear nail polish. Okay. Whatever. But she never said you can't do it. So I think my sister is, um, jealous. Maybe she feels like she's in competition. Maybe she likes Stephen. Maybe that, that, that's a possibility. Maybe she likes him. You know what I mean? Um, or maybe she, maybe it could be the issue that he might be mentally dis, um, disabled, you know? And, you know, I think a lot of people have issues with that. Maybe, but see, I, like I said, okay, when I look at people and see some of the things that come out of their mouth and the things that they do, I think a lot of people are mentally disabled. Okay, and it's more common than we think. All right, um, and no, I don't think that that should change my feelings for this particular person. I don't even really know him that well, but I tell you what, it would be great to know him. You know what I mean? And I, well, I think we sh we deserve that. I mean, after what thirty something years, why not? You know, that's my choice as an adult. Okay. Um. So, you know, when other outside people get involved. Like I said, they start taking sides. Like, well, you know, I don't care what excuse a person comes up with. What these people are doing is completely unjustifiable. Okay? Um, I am not going to change my religious views. I will never change my religious views. Okay? So it's a waste of time. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can throw all your little tactics, tactics or whatever. That is really a form of terrorism. Okay? You can do all that kind of stuff. But I'm not going to. Okay? I, I don't want to. I don't want it. Okay, that doesn't mean that I don't respect Jesus. It's just that I don't like your religion, period. Okay, and I don't need to go into it any further. Um, and I don't believe in your lifestyle. And that's my right to do so. So, you know, after all these this activism, you know, uh, activism, it's not straight activism. Like, you know, I'm not like, like marching down the street with signs or, you know, doing anything that is really radical. I'm not doing anything like that. But I make these videos, okay. And I know that my previous employers watch them. And, you know, maybe the lady at the employment agency, the manager over there, whatever, maybe she just said, you know what, she's on my family's side because she has a rapport with my sister Tanya and my sister Lisa and all these other people. And she doesn't really know me that well. So she's going to, I, you know, I know employers, I, hey, you know what, this is one of the things I started noticing when I started studying into management, okay, that these are certain things that are in place but things that really never get paid attention to in the workplace that are really essential components to having a well-run business okay that goes from everything from like you know the behavior of the managers to these work comp workers comp violations that are running all over the place these sort of things okay and i noticed that okay and, I, and i'm not trying to come off as like well let me tell you you're trying to tell us what to do i'm not trying to tell you what to do okay I think you should understand, but you know, at the same point, I'm not going to sit here and like try to, I have made several videos, several videos, like, like videos that just one after another for year after year. And I'm, I'm, I'm almost close to a thousand videos now. Okay. There is nothing I'm going to say that's going to make this change. Okay. There's nothing. These people have literally turned people against me. Okay. And I've done nothing wrong. All right, but you've, the, but these demons, okay, that I believe my family's demonic, okay? If you believe in the Bible, since it's a religious issue, I believe it's demonic behavior to be, to have this sort of compulsive desire. I mean, like this huge obsession to go out of their way to do the sort of stuff that they do. Really, because like, I, I don't see them that often, but they want to, you know, they want to sit there and know what I'm eating. They want to, that's weird, okay? And the reason why is because you're dealing with jealous people, okay? 
And jealousy, envy, these sort of things could manifest into demonic possession. And so, like, for example, who's to say that this woman over there at that agency didn't catch their demons? You know what I mean? And it's, it's very common. I'm not going to go into it. If you have a religious background, then you can read into it. Okay? But demons do exist. Okay? That's all I'm going to say. Now, going back to the regular mundane world. Okay? I'm not going to bring up too much of the spiritual realm too much. But this is what I'm dealing with. On this material plane right here. On this material plane right here. Is what I'm dealing with is I've been put into this program. Okay, which means that people give are going to give you a hard time. People are going to look at you weird. People are going to think, well, you know, they're going to be torn between this family issue and whatever. I don't have any goddamn family. I have no family. Okay. I feel if so, if somebody is going to do something like this to another person and you, and they're showing you a different face and, and when you're around you and then they're literally using other people to tear you apart, I don't know you. You're like a complete stranger to me. You know what I mean? I, I don't want anything to do with people. These people have never helped me. If they've gotten me a job, they were, they made sure they I got mobbed out of it. Okay? They've done nothing for me. These people have caused me nothing but the, the greatest heartache and sorrow. That's all they've ever done. That's it. Period. Okay? I have absolutely nothing to gain by putting up with this ridiculous bullshit. So, you know, I don't know about... What, it changes everything because it, it's one thing if you took a hiatus on your own or whatever I have no idea this is a situation in place I don't want to exert the energy I know that when I um, back in 2014 2014 2015 I literally had to take some shit to the shredders okay now at this point you know because these people have wrecked my credit and everything else it's like I could just throw my social security card out the window and I really don't care if somebody's going to use it or not period, because you're not going to get anything out of me because he fucked my shit up so bad, right? Uh, with me losing jobs and then, you know, playing fiddly fuck to put me in another job and whatever. So, uh, no sweat there, but still it was like, you know, I don't want people even though every, I realize now everybody knows every place I've ever worked, blah, 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 blah. I, I, it's, just, it's insane, okay? So I'm not comfortable with that. So I took it to the shredders, right? I took a big box full of shit that I was literally looking at these ads. I was doing everything I could to, you know, get my job. And I ended up having to take all this. Stuff. That's abuse. Meanwhile, these weird fucks have your house under surveillance. They're seeing you go through all this and they want to put more pressure on you so that you could come to Jesus. Okay. And I wonder, you know, I was thinking about that expression. You know how people say, come to Jesus. Was that originally started off from a hate group? And, and Jesus has nothing to do with hate, but I'm just saying is there's a lot of groups that use religious pressure on people. Um, it's called cause stalking, which is what I dealt with. Um, and I wonder, did that actually originate from one of those particular groups? You know, I wonder. I need to look that up sometime. But anyway, uh, I'm not going to make any apologies for my lifestyle. Okay, I think I live a pretty good life. I'm not perfect. Okay, but I think I live a pretty good lifestyle. Okay, I don't want to have anything to do with my family. Okay, and I'm not saying this because I want employers to take pity on me. I've never, that wasn't my point. But I do feel like there was a serious injustice. Okay, I had no say in what happened to me. None whatsoever. You know, I had no way of agreeing to what was the tragedy that took place in my life. You know, I had gone through, these people had made me spend money in an irresponsible manner for many years. And what I mean by that, yes, okay, of course, there were times where I went shopping when I really shouldn't have, okay? But what I'm saying is, like, for example, um, you know, they put you in a precarious financial uh, situation in the first place, right? So then all of a sudden, your car breaks down, and then you're, like, trying to scramble. How am I going to come up with all this money, right? Or they, they throw your ass out of work because they have an issue that's illegal in the first place. Like, they start that mess with that crazy secretary over there at the uh, manufacturer place. And no one takes my side because I was the girl who had a child out of wedlock when I was something years old. Because these people think that I'm seeing somebody. They think, they think that I'm seeing somebody, okay? And they're causing all these problems. So then I ended up losing my job for shit that I didn't do, Okay. So therefore, I'm out of work, and I got this to take care of, this to take care of. These people have literally destroyed my life. 
And so of all of that, they want me to sit here and say, oh, you know what? This, this, sometimes this is their tactic. They want you to get so beat down, so downhearted, that you're going to be like, oh, let me just go to church. Let me just give it all to God. That's what they want you to do. Okay? I'm not doing it. Okay? I have no respect for that sort of weird cult-like mentality. I have absolutely none. All right. So cease your bullshit. Now, I can't make people, you know, accept me. I can't make people like me or whatever. All I can do is my very best. I don't know how to do this at this point. And I, 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 the more I start thinking about it, the more I'm like, the more lost I get. Because like I said, if I was taking a hiatus or it was my, my issue, like I took some time off from work to try to find myself or some bullshit like that, right? It would be understandable where, you know, um, you could just slip yourself right back in. All right, but here is somebody who is literally trying to skew, move, shape, you know, my, just change every goddamn thing that I know, you know, for my 20, I've been working in accounting for 20, since 1997. Okay, that's a long time. All right, a very long time. Pretty much all I know at this point, right? And the only thing I'm really comfortable with. And I know th that there's some opinions going on in my family about, well, Maria likes lively things. Yeah, I like lively things. I like telling a joke. I like being social. Okay, she doesn't like her tune. Stop talking for me. You don't know what I want. You don't know what I need. Okay, the thing is, is that these people are jealous. Okay, they think that, you know, there's people in this town who are working in accounting without bachelor's degrees, right? But my family wants to set stipulations for me that don't necessarily have to apply for, to, for everybody else. That right there is an illegal in violation, employment wise, okay? Like you were saying, well, and then maybe she, they, my family seems to think, well, you know, someone from our background, you know, we encourage college. My mom was, she didn't give a shit, really. She's talked about it. She said, oh, it was something impressive. But it wasn't, you know, and considering the fact that these people have fucked up some of my other years, you know, I did the best I could based on the circumstances. I was a working parent. I mean, I had to sit here and pick up my shit and do the best I could. Okay. So I don't really appreciate their shit and trying to set standards for me. I'm not living to please you. I'm living to please me. I don't love you at all, okay? Now, there were times in the past where before I knew what you guys were, that I would have been able to say, well, I'm gonna make a compromise. Like, my sister wants me to do this favor for her, a favor, a favor that's within reason. Like, my sister needs to borrow $10. My sister wants to borrow, borrow my pair of shoes. They need to borrow my car. That's understandable, okay? Those are the kind of compromises. But you're asking me to give up my work, okay, my work based on assumptions that you had, and then that was all, all this stuff is, was created out of your psychotic rage, and then you think that I'm supposed to sit here, I never asked you for shit, never asked you for that, you know what I mean? When I started going and working in accounting, that was my idea. I approached that lady and I said, this is what I want to do. Can you help me? And she helped me. Okay. I never thought that there was these tag along people who wanted to sit here and like take hold of my project. I never wanted it. I did enough research on my own to know what I needed to do. I read examples on how to do things. Okay. And then you want to change it and do things your way. I don't want to please you. I don't care about you. I don't care about you at all. Okay. There was a time where I did, but there is no way in hell. That I would be dumb enough to care about you now. Okay? And I sure as hell would never care enough about anybody to willingly give up things that I needed to live. You know, I, it's just absurd. Really, it is. And this is a narcissistic behavior that you get from these people, right? Um, so, anyway, um, I don't know about my future. I have no idea what's going to happen to me. These people literally have caused me nothing but pain. Like, I, I have no idea. You know, like, should I go to the Career Services Center or some one of those places and say, you know, maybe I could get trained for something? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I really don't have any understanding or idea as to what other thing I could possibly do at my age that's going to make me somewhat comfortable or even, you know, but, oh, but if I bend to my sister's rules and be basically a bedridden, obese person, right? Is that the deal breaker? Is that what it is? The answer is no. I'm not going to do that. All right. I'm never going to do that. 
you know, we like to do things, and in, in, I do anyway, okay? Not everybody, some people will look at my situation and they don't understand that my family's manipulative. They think, well, you know, you know, you got these people that you can rely on. They're going to get you a job, you know, if you, if, you, if you need it. You know, whether, you know, whether you're a leader or you're, you're working as a subordinate, they're going to get you a job regardless of what you're doing. And it's not that I don't appreciate some people helping, but I never ask for their help. And I never ask for them to sit here and like, well, we're going to do this stuff for you and then we're going to expect stuff from you. What? You're blocking me. That's illegal. Okay, this whole operation is illegal, which I've said before. But I'm not doing anything for people that I don't care about. I don't care about you. I just don't. You know, and it's kind of stupid to think that I would after all of this. And if anybody would be that dumb to forgive you after all the years of abuse, I don't care how many fucking crocodile tears you shed, they're retarded. Okay, they are retarded. Okay. So, anyway, um, is there anything I wanted to cover in here? Um, I think that's about it, you know. My thing in my life is, is that I just want to live out the rest of the years in doing what I want to do. That's it. You know what I mean? And I don't know about the work issue. I have no idea. You know, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, I don't know. You know, because you can't put somebody in a, in a program like this that is based on genocide, I would like to say and add. And I think that should be emphasized. Um... And then expect people to just be like, okay, well, you know, whatever. Like, it's going to blow over. It's not going to blow over. You know, what you did was completely socially irresponsible. Completely. You know, because you can't deal with your own issues and bring things out in the open. Like at a dinner table or something. It's too late now. I'm not, I am never going to talk to you again. If you ever come at my door, I will slam the door in your face. Um, but you, you can't. So you need attention. So you want to sit here and bring other people into it. Right? Because that's, if you really want to nip things in the bud, you say, hey, look, you know, we're here, you're wearing wigs at work. What's going on? And I would have said, you know what? My hair is really choppy in the back, especially right here, in these little back pieces. I would say that. And then I would think that would be the end of the conversation. You know what I mean? Um, whether I was seeing Stephen or not, which obviously I wasn't, that's none of their business. It is none of your business. I don't feel any obligation to my family at all now some people do and if there's love there and there's, there's bonds there and there has been a mutual amount of respect there I can understand that but there hasn't been in my family okay so um, there will I will never ever feel any sense of responsibility to them I just want to get rid of them I don't want them in my life and you know I don't want them you know thinking that what I'm doing is a slap in their face like I said or that what I do is to get a male attention no it's not Okay, this is how I personally believe this is the right way to live for me. Okay, I'm not telling other people how to live their life. I'm just saying is I saw an example of what I did not like when I was growing up. And I wanted to make sure I never became that person. That's just how it is. So I'm going to wrap up this video. I will be back with another video sometime later. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm not saying that... Um, that then I'm not trying to be like, you know, uh, develop pity or not pity or, or ask for pity or anything like that. Okay. But I'm just saying, is, you know, use your logic, use your brain. Okay. Um, you can't force somebody to be a Christian. You can't force somebody to, um, you know, adapt to certain lifestyle practices that you're, com that are completely foreign to you that are, have absolutely no basis other than, um, you know, somebody being jealous. Really? Because there's no reason, there's no, nothing in my background that ever told me that what I was doing was wrong. Now, my mom may not have always agreed with it. Like, my mom used to didn't think it was, women should dye their hair. She thinks, well, black is the only color that you should put on your hair. Because my mom's hair used to get, you know, like some women like might make me, their hair might get gray or whatever. When I was younger, I did my hair like sometimes in like a, what do you call it, like a raspberry type color. I was at the of a certain age, even though it was one of the, wasn't my mother's preference. She was just like, well, you know, I don't. It's not for me, but whatever. That's mutual respect, okay. But when you sit here and say, well, da 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 da, and then sit here and act like I need to go to you to get a job when I never asked you for shit in the first place, that that sort of arrogance. You guys think you're God, okay? But I got a surprise for you. You're not. You're actually working for the other team. Wrapping up this video. Have a wonderful day.